Channel 4 News has obtained secret recordings which prove that the post office boss Paul Venels was briefed on allegations that sub-postmaster's accounts could be accessed and changed without them knowing. Yes, you got everything. The, the way that I've tried to brief Paula is, as soon as I have evidence that, you know, that there is a problem, I, she knows about it the next minute. These recordings from 2013 have never been broadcast before and reveal just how much the post office executives knew. She knows about the allegations, so we've mentioned it to her. OK. We've spoken to a man who was shown how it all worked by Fujitsu's so-called covert operations team. He tried to blow the whistle. The post office denied he'd ever been there. We shouldn't have had to endure this level of oppression. And for this, I hope they get to send the helm back. Mr. Rudkin's wife, the day after his visit, was accused by the post office of stealing thousands of pounds from their own branch. Susan did consider uh, and contemplated suicide. The risk was very high that she would overdose and, and kill herself. She was so depressed. Why did my wife and kids have to be put through this? This is so close to, to one of the issues at the heart of the complaint. Last week, this programme was the first to broadcast covert recordings at the heart of the post office scandal. Tonight, you'll hear what post office bosses knew and how they'd cover it up. The post office union rep and sub-postmaster, Michael Rudkin, is shown Fujitsu's darkest secret at the heart of the gigantic post office scandal. A moment featured in the recent ITV drama. Meet your friendly covert operations team. My chaperone introduced me to those that were left as being the covert operations team. He said the words, this is the covert operations team? Yes. What did you think when he said that? Well, I was astounded. Before his eyes, they're changing sub-postmaster's accounts without them knowing. He altered the figures of, a, of uh, one of the branch accounts on a, a live terminal in the boiler room at Fujitsu headquarters. I asked him, have you just altered those figures and is this real time? The reply was, yes. I says, are you absolutely sure? Yes, this is real time. It means they can sneak in behind your back, change your figures, bugger off and leave with no trace. It's remote access. In the drama, he's shown reporting back to the sub-postmaster's campaign group. His union had been told categorically Secretly accessing sub-postmaster's accounts was impossible. Realising my disdain as to what I'd just witnessed, I was then more or less just ushered back upstairs and pushed out through the door like, like a common criminal. He tried to blow the whistle. Nobody listened. The post office denied he'd ever been there. But four years on, Ron Warmington, the forensic accountant, is investigating the sub-postmaster's. Michael Rudkin can now drop his bombshell and send Ron an email proving he'd visited Fujitsu. This was uh, the evidence that we were all looking for, the smoking gun. And there was, to me, it seemed to be a long period of a deathly silence of which Ron replied back, Oh my good God, they're in a world of shit now. The heart of the scandal secretly accessing sub-postmaster's accounts. Covert recordings now reveal Susan Crichton, post office chief lawyer, twice admitting that the boss, Paula Venels, has been briefed about the Bracknell covert operations team. Ron Warmington warns that Paula Venels is about to be questioned by the MP who's campaigning on behalf of the postmasters, James Arbuthnot. What if Arbuthnot starts asking about the covert operation in Bracknell which Rudkin has witnessed. What then? If James says something like, um, and where are you on this assertion about the Bracknell um, uh, covert operations team, as, as, as it was referred to by Rudkin? Well, look, that's a specific case. Yeah. As long, as long as... When, we're, when, we've, when we finish the investigation. Yeah, as long as she doesn't come back and say, look, you mentioned this Bracknell issue, what is he talking about? Oh, we've known about that for you know, two months. Um, we know she knows about the allegations. Oh, OK. We're working on it. Oh, that's right then. OK. Good, good, good. So we've mentioned it to her. OK. OK. We're all going, well, that's all very odd. 
so Paula Venels knows about the Bracknell covert operation allegation. She knows they're working on it. They all think it's very odd. And we learn that the boss is always briefed straight away. She's got everything. The, the way that I've tried to brief Paula is, as soon as I have evidence that, you know, that there is a problem, I, she knows about it the next minute. As you know, Michael, we've got the uh, recording, so let me just play this to you, see what you make of it. If James says something like, and where are you on this assertion about the Bracknell um, uh, covert operations team, as, as, as it was referred to by Rudkin? What does that make you feel? The minute I, f I first heard it was one of elation, saying, Rudkin, you were right. And the second one is one of sadness, uh, thinking, why did my wife and kids have to be put through this? For all those years? All them years. They didn't, they, we shouldn't have had to endure this level of oppression. And for this, I hope they get to send the helm back. The very day after he went to Bracknell, he woke up at home. An auditor was in his bedroom, accusing his wife Susan, who ran their post office, of a £44,000 accounting shortfall. Susan did consider uh, and contemplated suicide. The risk was very high that she would overdose and, and kill herself. She was so depressed. He says he wrote to Paula Venels about the Bracknell operation. 15 years after the auditors ruined Michael Rudkin's life, Venels wrote this to the Business Select Committee about her time as post office boss. I raised this question repeatedly, both internally and with Fujitsu, and was always given the same answer that it was not possible for branch records to be altered remotely without the sub-postmaster's knowledge. But she confirms in that letter that this information was seriously inaccurate. But way back in 2013, even as lives are being ruined, the post office executives know that the forensic accountant investigation raises the spectre of a major miscarriage of justice. But they instruct the accountants to leave that well alone. They say that is what the boss, Paula Venels, wants. Ian um, had a, a chat with Paula earlier on, and we've had a couple of chats this morning. So Paula agrees that the original scope of the investigation did not go as far as looking at um, whether it was the um, miscarriage of justice point, Ron and Ian. So that's, that's not what she's looking for. She's, just, she's looking for the systematic, or systemic rather, not systematic, systemic weakness in the horizon system, but not, as I said, it doesn't go on to that next point around whether or not it's caused a miscarriage of justice or a suspension of a sub postmaster, because I think that once you've found it, then it's up to us to look for and see what impact it might be if that happens. Proof that the post office knew about a possible miscarriage of justice in 2013. Proof that they ordered the accountants not to investigate it. Yet, two years later, this is what Venels tells MPs. And if there had been any miscarriages of justice, it would have been really important to me in the post office that, that we actually surface those. Well, the post office certainly shut down the accountants. They sacked them. But by now, 2013, the post office had declared war on a second front, attacking troublesome MPs for pursuing the truth about sub-postmasters being wrongly prosecuted across Britain. The recordings prove post office executives wanted to shut down the MPs and make them go away. The need to somehow have a plan to close down this process, I mean, even to the extent of stopping MPs sending cases in now, um, yeah. but so it's how do we close down the MP side of the process and what would work for MPs and what could he sell to MPs and how quickly can we do that? And specifically, making the likes of James Arbuthnot go away. So is there any way, and I'm thinking out loud here, is there any way of, of, of shutting down the MP cases and making James and his friends happy so they'll just go away, basically? Back in Ibstock, in Leicestershire, Michael and Susan still live near the post office, wrongly taken from them by the post office over a 15-year nightmare. Yeah, 
And he too joins those demanding the police act now instead of waiting years for the public inquiry to conclude. Right. It's, it's not just us that's affected, it's the whole family. The way that, the sh that you're shunned within the local community, uh, whispers, no smoke without fire, and uh, Susan's reputation, and mine for that matter, just dragged through the mire. And I can't understand for the life of me why it's taking so long for the Metropolitan Police to, to get on top of this. Somebody's got to be held to account. MPs from across the parties are also demanding that the police act now. The Post Office and Fujitsu declined to comment on this report. The Post Office says it's committed to finding the truth. Paul Venels, Susan Crichton, Owen Lyons and Simon Baker didn't respond. Next week, the Post Office public inquiry resumes. For Ibstock, as across the UK, that is a long process to uncovering truth, but another delay to delivering justice.